Welcome to Look Designer 2.1 Overview. My name is Dado Valentik and in this quick video I'm going to show you everything that's new with this release. Now we can work scene referred from the beginning till the end. We have integrated ACES and HDR plugin all into same Look Designer. We have all new film stock emulation that's going to turn your image into something like this. And then we're going to look into the science of subtractive color space and look at those beautiful results, that little extra that we needed to make those film stock emulation profiles a little bit more realistic. And then we're going to see about some great performance enhancements. So let's start with the scene referred workflow. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop Look Designer 2 on one of the nodes. And the next thing I need to do, I need to select the camera profile. In my case, this is red IPP2. Uh, so what does it mean to work scene referred? So instead of outputting like we normally do to Rec 709 or any of the HDR for formats, what we're going to do is we're going to output to ARRI log C Alexa wide gamut. So that helps us keep our timeline in scene referred color space, in this case Alexa wide gamut. So when I switch over to timeline, I can then just drop output device transform or in my case log C to 709 or I can even swap it and make it log C to HDR 10. So with a single grade I'm able to output to more than one display which is a requirement that we have when we're working today on all the HDR shows. Next, I'm going to continue building my look. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is I need to select the contrast. And what's specific about contrast in Look Designer is that it's completely separate from your color. So it's not going to affect your color balance. It's just going to give you a different response. And here we have a selection of film negative profiles as well as film print profiles like Kodak 2383. So if I select profile for contrast here and here in the print setting, I select the color profile for the same print stock, I'm going to get pretty accurate film print emulation for this particular print stock. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go and adjust some temperature. So normally, you know, film is always a little bit balanced between D65, D60. And here you have a dial where you can fine tune your temperature and you can add some Kelvin values here. The next thing then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a negative profile. So we have a, probably the most extensive list of negative film profiles. And what is very specific about them that they do not affect your contrast again. So they are completely independent from your contrast response. They only affect your color. So what does it mean for you in practical terms? So as you can see here, as I'm changing different negative film profiles, my neutral density always stays constant and my contrast always stay constant. So really the only thing that is changing is just the color response. So as long as you are exposing your image accurately to 18% gray, you're going to get 100% accurate color response from this particular profile. So now I have a pretty interesting look here. So I have a Kodak 5207 and I can decide how much intensity I want here. I can do the same with my print. And uh, now I can move on to the most interesting part of our plugin, which is subtractive color space. To really understand the difference that these subtractive color controls are doing to your image, you have to look at the vectorscope. Because you see, as I'm increasing the density, the saturation is increasing while my image is getting darker, which is a complete opposite to what happens in additive color space. And that little difference is really where the magic happens. I'm going to show you just the difference if I'm using printer lights. Uh, so I'm going to go and increase yellow by increasing red and green at the same time. So what's happening, I'm actually changing balance of my image and moving it more into yellow direction while my saturation is staying constant. Now I can progress by making changes to the density of cyan, magenta and yellow layer and tweak my image further to get that beautiful skin tone balance that we get normally in film. And with printer lights, I'm going to counterbalance the loss of light intensity through increased density. So basically, I will be putting the exposure back 
on the same level. And check out these gorgeous results and these skin tones here, comparison with Rec. 709 and back to our film stock. We certainly wouldn't be able to talk about color management and scene referred workflow without not mentioning ACCCT. So in this release of Look Designer, um, I can just um, select as my input profile ACCCT as my output profile ACCCT and here I am. I can do exactly everything that I was able to do previously only in ACES. So right now I'm going to go and select uh, maybe a film profile for contrast. Um, then I'm going to use a negative stock. I'm going to go for a little bit newer stock from Kodak, um, something most current like 5219. And for print, I'm going to opt for generic. Uh, print profile, which gives me this gorgeous, warm, filmic hues, all of that while staying in ACES. As next, uh, let's take a, a deeper dive into the all new film stock emulation and benefits of it. And here is a shot from an upcoming movie, uh, courtesy of Roberto Negron from Axis Studios. Movies happening in 70s. It's clear that it needs to look like film. Here is something shot on film like Tenet. And here's another movie that actually, as a reference, is even closer to what we want it to be in terms of the skin tones. It's a movie called The Nest. So uh, let's see first actually what we would get from traditional film stock emulation. I'm going to use here Film Convert, probably the most popular plugin out there for film. And what I did is I found uh, one profile from Fuji 8553 and let's compare the results. And as you can see, it's not quite flattering and we are not there. It feels a little bit desaturated, a little bit empty. So let's see the results that we're going to be able to achieve when using Look Designer. On this occasion, as an output profile, we're going to use a, a new output. It's a special dedicated for film print emulation. So if you want to get to those very accurate results, this is the output that you should use. Um, then we're going to select this contrast option, also the 2383. And as a color profile on print, we're going to use the same film stock because many films from that era were printed on this stock. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the negative and I want this to be the same uh, negative stock that we used uh, with Film Convert, which is uh, Fuji 8553. Okay, the beauty of this FP is that it allows us to whack a little bit this intensity and go almost to maximum. Um, and that kind of makes that whole film color feel get a little bit more real. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually increase a little bit more temperature uh, just to compensate for the D65 to D60 balance. So here I'm going to go and add a few Kelvin here and then I'm going to move on to subtractive color. What I'm actually doing there is I'm going to nudge slowly my cyan, magenta and yellow layers um, just to get, you know, to that kind of, you know, level to clean my backs, to get that silkiness in back in blacks and also to, you know, help skin tones get that richness that we normally see in our reference. So slowly I'm just nudging it one at a time. Fantastic. So the next thing then we're going to need to do is we're going to just need to fix the exposure with our printer lights. And as you can see, we got very, very close to what our reference looked like. Just look at those skin tones. Absolutely beautiful. So the next I would like maybe just to increase the temperature a little bit more just to get closer to where we really want to be in terms of our reference. And here is the result. Actually, this is 1% better than anything we had so far, but that 1% is one that's going to make all the difference. And as last, I want to show you all the performance enhancements that happened under the hub and how we have managed to make plugin much more efficient and faster. So here is a sequence with, you know, something 20 something shots. I'm just quickly going to go and apply a look on all of them and check this out. Apply great and literally in a split second, the look got applied. Uh, last but not least, let's have a look what happens if we have a shots with strong neon blue lights. Have a look, 
print film emulation, everything's looking absolutely clean, no clipping. Look Designer 2.1 is available now. Go over to our website, get yourself a copy. We can't wait to see what you're going to be able to create with it.